guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing exceptionally well as always. Uh, some breaking news. This time tomorrow, we should have about three inches of snow. I was watching the Weather Channel, and apparently this is the first time in over 700 days that we're going to get an inch plus of snow, which is extremely rare and kind of concerning where I live. I'm just west of New York City. So I'm definitely excited to once again experience snow on my bike. I have the Shinko 241 tires. I should provide plenty of grip. Although I would prefer snow over rain any day of the week. When you have dry, kind of powdery snow, it's really not that bad to ride on. Okay, you know what? The sun is quickly setting, so I'm just gonna go ahead and activate headlight and tail lights. But the main topic of today's video is to go over a brand new high-powered mid-drive motor that is about to be for sale this month. And the product in question here is the CYC X1 Gen 4. This is the fourth iteration of this motor, so hopefully by now it's kind of spot on and fine tuned. Now, if you guys follow the e bike aftermarket space, uh, CYC is kind of the go to when it comes to, uh, I'm just gonna say, mid drive motors in general. The thing kind of disqualified themselves. They seem to be moving away from that market. And they do make solid products. They sell like three different main variants and each variant has a couple of generations. I've personally bought the Stealth Gen 2, I believe, about two years ago. The build quality of their products are super high quality. I mean, this thing is a solid hunk of metal. But one of the best things about their products is their wide compatibility. Man, that is a pitiful bike lane. But as far as I'm aware, you can install their mid-drive motors on essentially any bike. So that means theoretically, at least, you could just pick the motor you want that fits your budget, your power needs, and it should work with your bike. Now, the motor we're talking about today, the X1 Gen 3, is their high-powered offering. And they're saying here that the, the wattage is rated at 8.5 kilowatts. Of course, it's compatible with high voltage batteries. Also low voltage. So the, the range here is very wide. It's 36 all the way to 72 volt batteries. Again, that just helps this to be more versatile and compatible with whatever system you're running. But specifically with this Gen 4 model, there's, there's a couple of new things, but to me, in my opinion, there's two key new features. One is the controller. So this thing has what they're calling a new controller the name here I wrote it down it's the x12 and this has a maximum amperage of 100 amps I believe that's continuous so if you multiply a 72 volt battery times the 100 amps or technically a 72 volt battery on a full charge is 84 volts so if you multiply that times the maximum amperage that's how you get the roughly 8.5 kilowatts of power. But I did see on the website the peak amperage of the controller is a little bit higher at 120 amps. So we're talking about a lot of power here. If you want power, this is a, a really great option in the mid-drive world. I mean, just for reference, uh, the bike I'm on right now, 72 volts, 4 kilowatts. It's a geared hub motor, so a little bit different there. And uh, you can see I can keep up with traffic no problem. All right, so the first meaningful upgrade is that new controller with the, the high power. The second meaningful upgrade with this Gen 4 X1 mid-drive motor from CYC is the, the motor design itself. So apparently the, the stator, the thing that actually rotates and generates all the, the torque and power, is 25% longer. I'm not an electrical engineer. But I would assume that means the magnets are 25% longer. There's more copper wiring, giving you more overall power, but also better thermals, heat dissipation. And I think that's the main uh, reason why they redesigned this motor, made it a little bit larger on the inside for better heat dissipation. After all, this is a high powered system. So hopefully considering this is their fourth generation now, it's spot on and you shouldn't have overheating issues or anything like that. I will mention when I had the, the Stealth Gen 2, I never had overheating issues, but 
if you weigh a lot more or your bike is significantly bigger than my bike was, it could be a different situation. So now the motor being 25% bigger, just better thermals, that's only going to be a positive. Okay, by the way, I know some people are definitely writing comments right now complaining about how I'm riding my bike like a motorcycle. But, you know, I'm a product of my environment. I'm only doing this because where I live, there's no bike lanes. I ride in the method that's safest and most convenient for me. And I've deduced through now three years of riding e-bikes that riding like this is, in my environment with the infrastructure, is the safest, most practical way for me to ride my bike. I've tried going slow on the shoulder, but you can see the cars parked there, and if I ride too close to the cars, I could be doored pretty easily, which is something I do not want to happen because not only will that mess up my bike, but it would immediately send me to the hospital. So I have to stay away from the shoulder when there's cars like that. And that leaves me with essentially one option to ride like this. Now getting back to this motor, we don't have a price tag quite yet. It's going to launch later this month, so just around the corner. But for reference, the previous Gen 3 currently sells for $1,200. So it's either going to be $1,200 or a little bit more than $1,200. These are certainly expensive systems, but again, from my experience, the, the quality is there. And honestly what other options do you have now backing up a little bit i do have to say i'm a little bit surprised that the company released a new version of their uh, x1 pro personally i've been waiting for a higher powered version of their new photon to come out for those not in the know the photon is a brand new platform they introduced uh, I think earlier this year. The main difference here is they got rid of the primary chain drive, which has pros and cons. The biggest pro is the, the removal of moving parts. So you don't have to worry about adjusting the primary chain or having issues with that because it's all an internal gearing system now, which I think is a better option. Although you do lose the ability to change out the cogs and really tweak the gear ratios. But the Photon is my preferred choice here. The only problem is it, it was very low powered. So that maxes out at 52 volts, uh, I believe two kilowatts if you fully unlock it. And it's completely logical for them in the future to come out with a, a higher powered version of this new platform. Uh, fair warning, when they do, it's probably gonna be the most expensive product they sell. The current Photon is $950. So they make a souped up version that's compatible with 72 volt batteries and has a power range similar to this x1 gen 4 then they're certainly going to raise the price pretty significantly but regardless i'm still very excited for the potential of a product like that but i think the word in the street on why they're kind of holding off on that product is because the photon being a brand new platform uh, it does have some issues i don't think it's anything significant i think the company is just fine-tuning their products. They seem to have a habit of doing this, being that they're on the fourth generation of the old system. So they probably just want to fix a lot of the potential bugs before launching a new, more expensive, higher-powered version. But if you don't want to wait, the new X1 Gen 4 is certainly a great alternative. Just be warned that that primary chain drive and the extra moving parts can be a hassle. More maintenance, more things to potentially go wrong. The big thing I didn't like about the primary chain drive when I had the Stealth Gen 2 was actually the noise. Having two chains spinning at high RPMs certainly made a lot of noise. And that's another one of the key benefits of the new, their new platform. They cut down on the amount of moving parts, less things to go wrong, as well as less things to make noise. But with that said, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll leave links to this product below the video. I'm not affiliated with the company, by the way. This is not paid promotion. I'm just doing my best to cover the latest e-bike news, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.